Hello everyone, welcome to the Astrology News Report. I'm your intrepid host, Ron Berger. So let's take a look at the upcoming planetary patterns and predictions. What's in store in the heavens for October 12th to October 19th and beyond? At the end of this week, there will be three planets and the Sun changing signs. The week begins with Mars still in Scorpio, retrograde Mercury in Libra, Sun and Venus in Virgo. By next weekend, Mars has moved to Sagittarius, Mercury has retrograded back into Virgo, and Sun and Venus are in Libra. Thus, a new planetary formation emerges in the heavens, meaning new relationships between the planets which gives rise to a new set of energy patterns influencing life on Earth. Starting out with Mercury, the planet of communications, ideas, and explanations has been retrograde in Libra since October 4th. This Thursday, October 16th, Mercury will back into Virgo. Virgo is one of Mercury's own signs. So, the significations of Mercury improve when Mercury enters Virgo. But, not all is well. Mercury is still retrograde until October 25th. For a couple of days this week, there will be a four-way conjunction of Mercury, Sun, Venus, and Rahu, all in the last degrees of Virgo. When a bunch of planets are on top of each other, their energies have to fight for space to manifest. The result is confusion. One of the planets involved is the rational thinking planet Mercury, which is already retrograde and therefore less rational than usual. More trouble is brought by Rahu, which, since it is an eclipse point, can obscure things, thereby causing more confusion, or even deception. So, the end of the week is not so good for doing any important actions. Late Friday, October 17th, the Sun moves into Libra, followed by Venus on Saturday, October 18th. Venus moves from its sign of debilitation, Virgo. To one of its own signs, Libra. Thus, Venus's situation has improved. A planet is strong when it's in its own sign. But now, Venus is getting even more closely conjunct the Sun, barely a degree away, and therefore suffering from deep combustion. In other words, completely burnt up, as are its significations. The problem is, when a planet is combust, its energy cannot be expressed clearly. It cannot be discerned from that of the Sun. Thus, the planet of peace and harmony, Venus, is overwhelmed by the planet of will and power, the Sun. And, when we can't see the planet of guidance, we are without guidance. When we can't see the planet of value, it's harder to determine the true value of things. Also on Saturday, October 18th, Mars will be changing signs. The planet of action, aggression, conflict, war, and destruction will leave its own sign, Scorpio, and advance into Sagittarius. Both Mars and Sagittarius have a fiery, egoic quality. So this combination tends to magnify that characteristic of Mars and of Sagittarius. Mars is combative. Sagittarius fights for its own version of the truth. So this promotes self-righteousness and self-serving aggression. In its milder form, we'd call it enthusiasm. Meanwhile, Venus, the planet of harmony, is eclipsed by the sun. So, this new Mars position, with no help from Venus, indicates there's not much chance of finding a middle ground for agreements. By leaving Scorpio, 
Mars will no longer be receiving the beneficial trine aspect of Jupiter, the planet of optimism. But the Mars-Jupiter relationship continues, except that now it is Mars influencing Jupiter instead of Jupiter influencing Mars. Since Sagittarius is one of Jupiter's signs, Mars now has Jupiter as its dispositor. That means that Mars's energies are getting transferred to Jupiter. The result being that Jupiter starts behaving like Mars. Not only that, Mars, by its special 210 degree eighth sign aspect, is projecting its combative, destructive energy directly onto Jupiter. And that's not all. In Jupiter's other sign, Pisces, lies Ketu and Uranus. These planets are also transferring their energy to Jupiter. All three, Mars, Ketu, and Uranus, are classed as natural malefics and by their occupation of Sagittarius and Pisces, are altering Jupiter, the major natural benefic planet. So, this tends to downgrade the potential of Jupiter to manifest its energy in a positive manner. We're talking about the planet of wisdom here. And there's still another feature of the Mars transit through Sagittarius that needs to be considered. In Vedic astrology, Mars is known to put out a full force aspect four signs ahead of itself, what is known as a forward square in Western astrology. That means that from Sagittarius, Mars will be sending its energy to the sign Pisces and to the planets in Pisces, which happen to be K2 and Uranus, two first-rate malefics. K2 is idealism, change, and has the potential for creating chaos. Uranus is the planet of sudden events, rebellion, and disruption. The two of them together indicate crises of all sorts, of which there have been plenty in the world lately. Now, Add in a rather inimical push from the planet of force, violence, and destruction, Mars. The general rule in Vedic astrology is that having a couple of malefic planets together in one sign is bad enough. But if you get an aspect from another major malefic, now you have real trouble. So the sign Pisces is going to be under heavy pressure for the next several weeks. In world events astrology, Pisces represents the oceans and boats. This would not be a good time for going on an ocean voyage. Pisces also signifies public welfare work, relief work and relief workers, hospitals and charitable institutions. Of course, this immediately brings to mind the efforts to deal with the Ebola crisis which is still going to get worse before it gets better. Next week, I'll go through the Zodiac and analyze the Mars transit for its effects and predictions for each rising sign. You'll not want to miss that. Thanks for visiting astrologynewsreport.com. I'll be posting updates during the week on Twitter at Astro News Report.